let's talk about block states and block state properties. 121 Minecraft modding course is available down below with over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. All right, we found us back in Taylor once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about block states and block state properties. Now, while this is a, well, this is a roughly theoretical topic, I actually highly recommend you follow this through because understanding block states and block state properties is going to be extremely useful for, I mean, number one, all of the coming tutorials still, but also it's extremely important for the next tutorial where we'll talk about data components because, well, the block states and block divide, so to speak, is similar to the item item stack divide, which is actually quite important to understand. So let's think about this for a second over here. We will actually implement a custom block and we'll see but first, we'll think about the magic block. When we have this magic block, right, we're creating one block right here in the mod blocks class, right? So you can see new magic block. Now, one thing you might say is, well, yeah, that's fine, right? So this is a magic block and it uses our custom magic block class right here. However, I can set down how many magic blocks inside the world. Well, in theory, I could, you know, the entire world could be magic blocks, but they're all different magic blocks, right? The same thing goes when we think about items, right? When we think about items and we have the chisel, for example, where we create one new chisel item, right? This class has only created one chisel item over here, right? However, I can have three different chisel items. And if I right click with the second one 30 times, only that particular stack inside of the inventory will take damage. Now, this is, comes very sort of intuitive to a Minecraft player. You're like, of course, with different stacks, they, those are different items. Well, wait a second. Right. Let's think about our terms and what they refer to. We have a chisel item class, right? This is the class which in which we define basically all of the functionality. We then have the chisel item created over here as a field. And then we have the item stack inside of the inventory, right? And the same way that it works with an item, the same way does it work with a block, right? So we can have multiple different magic blocks, right? In theory, we could create a second one that has the same functionality over here, similar to what we see with the experience dropping block, right? So we have actually two of those, right? But they, but they represent different blocks entirely, right? These represent the deep state ore block and the pink garnet ore block respectively here, right? So to show this as an example in our custom package, in the block package, we're going to make a new class called the pink garnet lamp block. And the idea here is that I want to create a block that when I right click it, basically, well, it can turn on and off. It can change its texture as well as it's going to give off a glow as well. So this is going to extend from the block class, making sure we choose the one from net Minecraft block over here. We're going to hover over this and create constructor matching super. And the astute among you, right, the, those who have studied basically Java for a little bit longer are going to be like, well, very straightforward. If we want this to be able to turn on and off, we're just going to make, let's say, a public boolean over here i'm going to call this something like clicked or something like that and then we're simply going to use this now that is actually a very good approach however we want to remember this right now we're on the level of like talking about java right so we have a pink garnet lamp block over here this particular boolean is going to get created for each instance of this lamp block i want to reiterate once again how many instances of the magic block am i creating like the of the magic block class one I am ever creating one instance of this, and that is the magic block. So if I were to do this, that is not going to work because it is tied to an instance. Now, an another person might say, well, why don't we make it static, right? Then, then it's going to be shared and that's going to be the same value. Well, this is like literally the same issue that we had before. It doesn't matter now how many lamp blocks we create. The clicked Boolean is going to be shared among all of them. So neither of those things work. What we need to do is we need to use a Boolean property. So this property basically works with the block state, which is the block set down inside of the world. And that is the instance of that particular block. So we're going to make a public static final Boolean property. And this is going to be called clicked over here equal to the Boolean property dot of. And then this is going to be clicked. There we go. Every time you add a property, because there are actually multiple, let's control left click on this. We can see the property class. And if we do control H on this and see there's int properties, enum properties, and there's even a direction property. And in theory, you could also create your own properties. That's definitely a little bit further than we want to take this tutorial. But every time you add a property to a block class, you have to override the append properties method over here and then get the builder dot add and then adding this particular property to it. And what we now also want to do is I want to right click 
the block that is set down, right? The block state inside of the world. I want to right click this and I want to change this clicked property right here. The way to do it is we're going to override the on use method. And then here we're going to return the action result of success. That's going to give us a swinging animation. And we're going to say if world dot is client. And then here, once again, extremely important to pay attention of this. We're going to negate it. We have world is client. And in the front over here, we have the exclamation mark to negate it because we want it to be on the server. Because then we can say set block stating and see it's called set block state. Idea being we are setting a specific block state at a particular position. Right, so we're going to set this at the position there. I want to say state. This is the state that we've just right clicked, right? This is the actual instance of the block that we've just right clicked. And we're going to cycle through the clicked Boolean property over here, which is basically going to turn it from false to true or from true to false, right? That's literally what this cycle does. And that's literally all we need to do in this case. We're now going to create the, this particular lamp block with a very interesting thing as well. And that is going to be, it's going to shed some light, but we're going to see this in just a second. We're going to have a public static final block over here. This is going to be our pink underscore garnet underscore lamp equal to the register block method pink underscore garnet underscore lamp with the second parameter being a new pink garnet lamp block passing in the settings dot create. And then here we can call, let's say, strength of one. We can also call requires tools. And then we want to call the luminance method, luminance, there you go, which requires a two in function of type block state. Sounds really complicated. This is basically high level overview, a supplier that, re that returns an integer, right? So we're giving it a block state and we want an integer. You can also think of this, right? This is basically a lambda expression. You can also think of this as a method that returns an integer and has a block state as its parameter. So here we're going to say state and then do the little arrow over here. And then the question is, well, how can we differentiate with this state? Well, wait a second. We can say, say state.get, getting the particular property over here. And the property we want to get is the pink garnet lamp block that clicked, right? And if this is true, we want to return 15. And if it's false, we're going to return a zero. So we're just using the ternary operator over here to say, hey, if clicked over here is true, then I want to return a, a 15. And if it's false, right? So basically it's off, right? The lamp is off. Then we're going to turn a zero. One last thing we could actually do in the class over here is to set a default state. So if I say set a default state, right? I can then say that I want this.get default state with the particular property clicked being false over here, because maybe what I actually want is every time I set down the lamp lock, it should actually be turned off, right? It shouldn't be on. There you go. But that is the whole idea. And the thing is that once again, I'm only ever creating one pink garnet lamp block class, right? This is the only instance of this class I'm creating, but then I have this block and this block basically creates block states, which are the instances in the world. So let's actually see this by, first of all, adding it to the creative mode tab right here. And then we can just go on to the translation. That's obviously nothing too crazy. And when it comes to the textures, we actually have two textures because I'm going to have a lamp that is on and a lamp that is off. So you can see I have two textures over here. And then we can proceed to the data gen, which is a little bit, it's not really hacky that much, but I will actually copy over the lines that we need here. Those are as always, and as all of the code always available down below. And we can see, it just did not recognize the pink garnet bl lamp block over here, but that's going to be fine. There we go. And you can see that basically th these three lines are now creating the JSON file that points to the different texture over here, depending on whether or not the lamp is on or off, right? That's actually quite important. Now, is this strictly necessary? I would say it's not strictly necessary reason being because when you, let's say, for example, have one of those lamps, right? You ever will only add one lamp, then you can just write those JSON files manually, right? That That's the point. The point of data gen isn't to be like, you have to use data gen all the time, every time, and otherwise it's it's stupid. No, no, no. If it doesn't save you time, right, then it doesn't make any sense. But if you were to have, instead of the pink garnet lamp block, let's just say like a, a colored lamp block, right? And you'd have it like with all 16 different colors, obviously, then these three lines would be way better than let's just generate this via the data generator. I think that that's going to be okay. And we can actually see, we're going to see the different JSON files that generate. They're not too crazy as like complicated. They're not too complicated. They're not too complex, uh, but let's just see them and then we'll see. So there we go, four of them written. And we can see that this is the block states JSON file 
genuinely not the craziest thing at all, right? And then the block model files are actually just normal block model files that just point to the different textures. So yes, if you had one of those, I, I probably wouldn't bother with data gen at this point. If you had 16 of those, absolutely, this would be preferred to have this and then just duplicate that or basically, you know, take this, change it up, right? Like make it a, a method over here that passes in a different block and then that, that would be super easy at that point. But yeah, that is basically the idea of this. And now I want to show you, right, that we can set down, once again, multiple of these particular blocks, right? Even though we only have one class instance of it, like one object created of it, and it's going to work totally fine. Right, so let's actually go into the game and see if it works. All right, so I can Minecraft and you can see the pink garnet lamp has been added to the game. And if I set it down, you can see, well, that all works totally fine. However, what is really cool about this is if I right click one of those, you can see specifically the one that I just right clicked turns on and I can also turn it off and it also sheds some light. So that is the idea. I can turn them on and off individually. Now, once again, some of you might say, yeah, but you know it intuitively, but you don't quite know it sort of, you can't really articulate it why this is the case. Once again, right, we have a pink garnet lamp, one class, right? And that is basically governing all of these different instances over here, which are block states. So every time someone talks about a block state, that is the sort of the manifestation, but right? the instance into the world. While if you talk about a block, in theory, you're talking about sort of the, like it's sort of talking about the, like the platonic ideal, you know, where you're like, it derives from that. That's one of the ideas. But yeah, basically these are individual instances and that's pretty cool. Also, you've seen how you can, well, basically add, you know, lighting to your, uh, to a block if you want to, for example. But yeah, that is block states and a cool lamp added to Minecraft. If I find it, I will also link a article on the block states in the description below. That can also be very useful indeed. But that's going to be it for this tutorial. Next time in this video, that's what we'll talk about data components. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.